morning, everybody. It's good. It's so good to, good to see you this morning, all your, your smiling faces. How many of you know God has good things in store for you? Good. I, I hope you know that. I, um, I'm, any ever, anybody ever, like me, sometimes roll out of bed? Anybody ever just roll out of bed sometimes? Even in your rolling, uh, God has good things in store for you. Um, I, I know this because the Bible talks about it. The Bible says that when it talks about this is the day that the Lord has made. There should be something on the inside of us that wants to rejoice and be glad in it, right? And so each new day has an opportunity, a, a new opportunity for you to, to bask in God's presence, but also to have uh, an expectation on what God wants to do. Not expectation in ourselves. If you put expectation within yourself, you'll be disappointed. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Um, but when you put your expectation on God, you can expect something good to happen. And that's what I pray that happens on Sunday morning. I pray that you don't just be like, well, get up, everybody. We got to go to church. I'm praying that they'll be like, your, your kids are like, mom, dad, wait, we got to get to church. That's why David said, I was glad when they said to me, let's get to the house of the Lord. There's good things in store. I enjoy, again, I say this uh, on Sunday morning, I enjoy coming to, to church not to, just to see, see you, but also to meet with the Lord. Amen. And so I pray that you don't wait for the service to start, but uh, the service is, is waiting on you because you're already ready to be able to enter into his gates. Just what, run into his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. Enter his courts with praise because he's worthy of all of our praises. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm just telling you, it's an expectation. When you turn that signal light on to come over here to the church, when you're getting ready to turn in, that you already have a tune in your heart. That you already, he's already been speaking to you through the week. And he's already encouraging you. And then all of a sudden we get to church, it's already, and you're just joining in with everybody else that's been already, that's been getting ready for Sunday. Getting ready, not just for Sunday, to meet with the Lord. Amen? I'm telling you what, when I get ready to go on a date with Vanessa, depending on where we're going, I mean, I, I, I prepare. I get ready for the date, you know? I mean, I, I spray that cologne into the air, and I walk into it like it is the glory of God. You know what I'm saying? I walk into it. I mean, I, I spray it, and she'll be like, that's too much. I'm like, girl, I want to smell like romance. You know, she's just like, you smell like, you know, anyway. So, um, but I'm saying I get ready for it. Anybody else, you get ready. Get back. Anybody turn on tunes before you get worship before you come in? To, come in. Turn on worship. Like, man, I'm ready. We're getting ready to meet with the Lord. We're getting ready to worship. We're getting ready to have a time, uh, a, a great time in God. So prepare for that. And and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, when you come to church, you can do it as a check off your list and say I've gone to church, or you can say like in the black community, like we had church today. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And some of y'all don't know what that means, but I'm gonna go ahead and explain it to you. When somebody says uh, that we have had church, it means, anyway, I'm just saying, it's expectation. Um, I, um, we've been talking about uh, the Word of God, and I'm going to continue talking about that this, this morning, but I I'm really want to help, help us to dive into what God is saying, because it's, we've been, it's one thing to talk about the Word of God, it's another thing for us to to dive into what God is saying because he wants to speak to us. I have never opened up the scriptures where there's been a time when God is saying, today, I don't want you to find anything in there. I just want you to just struggle. I've never once opened the scriptures and said and, and had that experience. Every time I open the scriptures, there is an expectation that God is going to speak to me. And when I not only do I open the scriptures with that expectation, I am praying that you open the scriptures with that expectation that God is not going to just speak to you, but he's going to transform you. Because the word of God is living. It's powerful, sharper than any two edged sword. And so the word of God has the ability as it's living to cut off all the excess stuff that you don't need. And penetrate your heart to give you the things that you do need to live and advance the kingdom of God. Amen? Let's pray. Lord, I want to thank you for this time. I thank you, Lord, for who you are. And I thank you that because of who you, because of who you are today, that we would get a new and fresh revelation of your love, of your presence. And I thank you, Lord, that it is you who are working in us. You are working in us both to will and to do for your great pleasure. So we thank you for that, <clears throat> and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. On Friday mornings, I pray with a group of guys uh, that are close to me, and I, um, um, 
we usually pray most most Friday mornings. Uh, and um, I, for whatever reason, sometimes when I was talking to you this morning about rolling out of bed, this past Friday was one of those deals where I was rolling out of bed because we pray pretty early in the morning, early on Friday mornings. And I was driving here to the church. We pray in my office. And as I was driving to the church, I pulled into the back. And right across the doorstep of the door to my office was a homeless man laying right in the middle of the doorway. And the only reason why he was there is because it was very windy and it was cold and he wanted to get out of the wind and, and get out of the cold. And so I thought to myself, I've never seen this before. It's one thing for me to say, go out and be the church to the unchurch. It's another thing for the unchurch to come to the church in this way. So I didn't know what to do. I was like, man, you know the thoughts that go through your mind. Um, you know, does he have a weapon? You know, do I call the police? What do I do to, 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 what do I do to engage this? I mean, I'm not necessarily scared, you know, because I can handle myself and I've just seen the Oscars. And so um, I... Um, <laughs> Wait, why was that funny? I just, just inserted something in there anyway. Um, guys got me off track. Okay, so, <laughs> I'm in, so I, I drive my truck, uh, my, my car around to the front, and uh, I come in, and, the Lord's, and I'm like, Lord, what do I do? And he goes, what you're supposed to do. I'm bringing people to the church, bringing the homeless to the church. Engage him. And so I go in, I walk in the door, I open the door, and I said, hey, brother. I said, hey, hey, hey. He goes, yeah. I go, um, can I help you? I said, are you laying? He goes, I'm just cold. And he goes, I'm cold and, I, and I'm hungry. And he goes, and I just needed a place. If you could just let me sleep, I'll, I'll, I'll just, when time's right, I'll get up and go. And I said, no. I said, come on. Come on inside and warm up. I said, come inside. So I let, he walked to me. He's right here in the, in the corner. And I sit him down. And I talk, start talking to him. I asked him what his name is. He said, his name is Wilson. I go, well, that's a last name. And the only thing I can think of is Castaway. Wilson! That's all I could think about. And so I, I, I engage him. I said, what are you doing here? He said, man, I was walking. I'm homeless. I don't have anything. Uh, and he goes, I'm, and I, just, I just left a hospital, Baylor Hospital. And he goes, and I have any place to go. So I just wanted to st sit here and sleep. And I said, well, let's talk. And I said, what, what can I get you? And so I, he said, um, I'm, I, if you give me a blanket, I'll be on my way. And I said, well, I don't have a blanket. I said, but I do have a jacket. I have a coat that's here in my office, and you can have that. And um, I, didn't, I hadn't told Vanessa that I had given her my coat away because she had bought it, and it's safer for me to tell her, say that up here than me to say it <laughs> next to her. But I'd given my jacket to him that Vanessa had bought for me to go over my suit. And I just said, do you know Jesus? Uh, his name was Sal Wilson. He goes, you know, I know Jesus, but I don't know Jesus. And he starts laughing, and I just said, well, you can know Jesus. I said, I want, I want to pray for you. And he said, well, I just got out of an insane asylum. He goes, I've been in an insane asylum. And he goes, and I, he goes, I don't know. He goes, nobody wants to hear anything I have to say. I said, well, not, not only did that's wrong, I said, but not only did Jesus knows exactly what you're going through, and I want to pray with you. So right then and there, right in this couch over here, I prayed with Sal and I didn't know what to pray because I didn't know a whole lot about him. But I just started praying the word of God over his life. Lord, would you, would you grant him the peace of God that surpasses all understanding? Will you help him to have the mind of Christ, Lord? Did you change his mind? I know he came out of an insane asylum, but you can give him the mind of Christ. I pray, Lord, that you would guard and rule his heart and mind through Christ Jesus. You would cover him. You would protect him. You would bring him to the bleeding side of Calvary so that you can help him to do what you've called him to do and be who you've called him to be. And I pray, Lord, that you would surround him not only with your angels, but surround him with the hope that does not disappoint. So I just began to pray the word of God over him, and you could feel all of the anxiety and all of the pressure just lift off of him. And all of a sudden, he calmed down, and he looked in my eyes, and he just said, thank you. He goes, if you give me that jacket, I'll be on my way. And I, I gave him the jacket, and he walked around the corner, and I never saw. I just walked up, just said, walk away. And I just was like, Lord, thank you for your word that's alive. It's active. It's powerful. Sometimes when you don't even know what to pray, you can pray the word of God. Because the word of God will cause you to tr be transformed even when you don't necessarily. Sometimes I don't even know what to pray. I just pray the word. Amen. Because the word is able, the engrafted word of God is able to save our souls. And so when you read the word of God. So I'm just not just reading it. But I'm telling you, it causes. Because God says that he watches over his word to perform it. He didn't watch over my word very well, but he watches over his word to perform it. And so sometimes we don't even necessarily know what to do. You can pray the word. 
and the word of God on your situation causes there's transformation. Amen? The Bible says, be not conformed of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? How do you make new your mind? With the word of God. You want a new mind? You want to set your mind on things that are above? These are scriptures that I'm quoting, by the way. You set your mind on things that are above and not on the things of the earth? Then, then the word of God. You want to change the way that you think? You want to change the way? It's not what you want. Can I just tell you that right now? This is one of the things that's hurt our church, hurt the, not just the soldier, but I'm talking about the body of Christ. It's this consumer mindset that we have when we come into the doors where we want our ears tickled. And I, I like to use humor. I like to preach um, good messages. But our good messages are not necessarily going to change your life. The word of God will, though. The word of God will change you. It will transform you. I don't know anybody that's growing as a disciple of Jesus who is not engaging in the word of God. Somebody like somebody, well, you're going to church. I love that we go to church. We, but again, we're talking about going to church and being the church are two different things. But if you want to grow as a disciple, you want to grow as a follower of Jesus, the word of God causes that to happen in your life. I mean, I don't know any way. I wish I could hook you up to a wire. I wish I could hook you up to some wire. And all of a sudden, after 10 minutes, and then all of a sudden, I go, all done. And you had like 50 scriptures in, inserted into your heart and into your mind. I wish I could walk up behind you and hit you in the back of the head of the Bible. Poof. I know in whom I have believed that he is able to keep that which is committed to me against that day. I wish that all of a sudden I got, but it's not. The only way I can tell you that the word of God can get in your heart and change you is for you to open it up and read it to engage the word of God let me say that differently not just for you to engage the word of God but for the word of God to engage you not for you to read just read the word of God but for the word of God to read you because the word of God is able to do that the Bible says it's quick it's powerful it's alive it's sharper than any two-edged sword even to the piercing and the division of the soul and the spirit between the joints and the marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It's, it, you can put your life up against the word of God and say, it can discern. I know, I think my heart is this, but here's what the word of God says. I believe my mind thinks this, but here's what the word of God says about it. I believe this, this is what the word of God says. And that's why I said two weeks ago, talking about the word of God. That's why I was talking about the plumb line. What do you believe about the word of God? Do you believe that it's just black ink on white paper? Or do you believe that the word of God is alive? And do you live your life not by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God? Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Not what you think, not what your emotions are, not what your situation is, not what your circumstances says, not what the doctors have said, not necessarily, not all those things. And it may be fact, it may be, it looks like it's truth, but there's a higher truth and that's the word of God. That's why I'm asking these questions. As we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, the Bible says things about homosexuality. The Bible talks about, um, it talks about the fact of adultery. It talks about lying, too. It talks about all sins. We try to categorize sin. Sin is sin. We believe it's wrong. And if you're struggling with any of those things, I said that a couple of weeks ago, you're struggling with same-sex attraction, you're, same, you're struggling with any of those, those sins that the Bible says is wrong, we want to help you. We don't, we don't want to leave you in that place because we believe the Bible is, 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 is living and is able to transform you and change you. And help you and to grow. I'm glad I'm not who I was 10 years ago. Aren't you glad about that? Aren't you glad that you weren't who you were 20 years ago? Aren't you glad about that? Some of you young people are like, I'm not even 20. Yeah, well, just be glad you, you know, we're not the same as you were yesterday. <laughs> right? You will change. But God is able, He helps us. He, he walks through, He walks. I'm so, so glad that the Word of God changes us. That's why it's important for us to, what is the standard in the church? What's the standard for us? What has God called us to do? How are we going to live in this postmodern, post-Christian world? What is, the world's, what is the world's system? What is God's system? The kingdoms of this world are becoming the kingdoms of our God. And he's advancing his kingdom through his word. And if that's the case, how, how are we going to walk according to the scriptures and according to the word of God? Because your emotions will be all over the place. You could turn on CNN for five minutes and your emotions can go up and down and sideways. And I'm you, you know I'm telling the truth, right? I can watch one segment of, anyway, I'm not going to say, anyway, I can watch some, uh, and, and my emotions can be all over the place. And the word of God will settle me because his word is forever settled in heaven.
I didn't make that up. That's scripture. So is that a challenge this morning for us as the church? Where have we gotten off? Where, I'm, I'm, ta- I'm talking to all of us. I'm talking to those of you that are online, those of you may be scrolling. I'm talking to all of us. Where have we gotten off in the scriptures? Who moved the goal, the goal post? When, the, when, when Paul said to live as Christ and to die as gain, to gain him, who, who moved that being the goal? To live for Christ and what his word says. Now, I know this isn't one of those messages where you be like, preach, pastor. It's all right. <laughs> this is important for the body of Christ and where we are today. Yes. Are we going to live according to the word or are we going to live according to the world system? If you have your Bibles, turn to Acts chapter 2. I'm going to give you a little bit of meat this morning. And so Acts chapter 2, we're going to, I'm going to cut in. I know this is what you're not supposed to do, but I'm going to cut in to one of, this is Peter's, this is Peter's sermon. Peter's sermon, as he's, as he's talking uh, and preaching, the whole, for you that don't know, the Holy Spirit has come. Holy Spirit has come on all of the, uh, uh, the, the, in the upper room. They begin speaking in other tongues. The Spirit of God is there. And, they, and other people have seen this, this commotion, because the Spirit comes in like a rushing mighty wind. And they go, these people are drunk. That's what they are. And so Peter, standing up with the 11, we, he's preaching to them. And I'm going to cut in on verse 29. Here's what it says. Brothers, I may say to you, and I'm reading out of the ESV, with confidence about the patriarch David that both he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Everybody knows it. It's happened. We're all witnesses of it. Everybody in this that's here under the sound of my voice, Peter saying, is, is our witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, the Lord, Father, it's amplified says this, said to my Lord, the son, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Now here is, here is the crescendo. Every pastor, every preacher has a crescendo in their message where they're trying to drive a point home. Peter is driving this point home because he's tell, told them about all the things that Joel the prophet has said. And it's all the culmination of this coming to this point right here. Let the house of Israel therefore know for certain, without doubt, without hesitancy, that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. This Jesus that you crucified, God has raised him up and made him both Lord and Christ. That means everything has changed. Nothing is the same again as a result of God raising Jesus from the dead and all power, all authority, all dominion, all might has been given to him and therefore he remains and still is the reigning champion, King of Kings and Lord of Lords and the Alpha, the Omega beginning and end of all the earth. All of it has been given to him. And because of that, everything has changed. Now, I'm going to tell you this. There are some things that have changed in history. We have, we, we have had um, penicillin that has changed. I'm, a, I'm glad of penicillin. Vanessa was reminding me after first service. She goes, I'm glad penicillin works because Vanessa had a, her, her appendix ruptured, and she had gangrene that had, 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 had festered, and she was going to die. And it's a true story. She's going to die. And they were able to give her some pen, and, it, and she was, she's, she's alive because of it. So that changed everything. Then all of a sudden, I remember the, the, the boom that happened when you had to cut a tree down with hand saws, and then chainsaws happened. Aren't you glad about that? Glad that changed you. And then all of a sudden, something happened in Texas that changed everything forever. Bluebell was introduced, and that changed everything. Everything has changed. Have you ever had a tub of praline butter pecan ice cream? Nothing says take off the spirit of heaviness, like opening up a tub of ice cream and just digging into it. I'm talking about the first bite says, I love you. You know, it's something about it. Everything has changed. 
and I'm not trying to compare Jesus and the Holy Spirit to Bluebell, but it's pretty close. The combination is pretty good if you've not tried it. The combination is pretty good. So, well, so he says everything has changed. And I want to say this to you, and I want you to hear this. How many of you have ever heard this phrase when you got saved? Have you, it's a question that they ask, have you made Jesus Christ the, your Lord and Savior? Anybody ever remember asking that question? Raise your hand if you remember them probably saying that. Somebody asked you, maybe, maybe how you can. Have you made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life? And here's what I, I want to ask. I think that's the wrong question to ask somebody. Because we don't make him Lord. He already is Lord. You don't make him Lord. How do you make somebody Lord that already is Lord? A better way to ask it is this. Have you yielded to his lordship over your life? Have you yielded to his lordship? He is Lord. There's no doubt about it. We just read in the scriptures that it says, this Jesus whom you crucified, God has raised him up and made him both Lord and Christ. So the question is, have you yielded to the lordship that he has over your life? And so that's, that's really the question. Are you, have, have, you, have you done that? Have you yielded? You know what a yield sign is? That's one of the things when I was teaching my kids to drive. They're like, hey, that's a yield sign right there. Oh, I didn't see it. I'm like, man, over here, I, we almost died. I mean, I never forget the one time I was teaching CJ how to drive, and we were sitting up there, and it was a deep honk, honk. You know, he just ran out in front. I'm just like, ah. So, and my life flashed before my eyes. I almost got shot twice. You know what I'm saying? Just... <laughs> It's a yield sign. Stop. <laughs> yield. What that means is, here's what it is. If you don't know what it is, some of you that that's drive crazy, if you don't know what a yield sign is, it just means that the person, the other person has the right of way. So here's what I want to say to you this morning. Does Jesus Christ have the right of way in your life? Have you yielded to the right of way? Have you yielded your life to him? Lord, it's not my will, but your will be done. Because you're the Christ, you're the Messiah, you're the King of kings, and I am a follower of you, therefore I'm yielding my life to you. That's what it means to yield your life to the King of kings and the Lord of I know I'm talking to somebody in here this morning. It's all right. I don't know if it's you, but I hope it gets to your heart this morning that you're yielding to his lordship through the word of God. So this is what it means. Because of that, because... God raised him up and made him both Lord and Christ. My life has to change. And the fact that, Lord, what do you say about my situation? What do you say about the things that are going on? What do you say about governmental systems? What do you say about the things that, are, that the world systems versus the, the kingdom of God and the, his way of doing things? Not my will. Say it with me. But your will be done. So important because the systems of this world, they're doing everything they can to come take over. That's the reason why Tim Barton last week was talking about this, the critical race theory and the whole issue of all this racism and all these things that are going on. So he's talking about the whole deal about, and I'm going to say it, and it seems like you're going to get in trouble for saying that. I'm going to say it anyway, and that is the fact that this socialistic world view of people trying to put, uh, trying to put on in the church world, I'm going to say it out loud, it does not work. Amen. Socialism does not work. It doesn't. And so whatever socialism, socialistic worldview that they're trying to push on you, whatever race, racist worldview that they're trying to push on you, whatever these world systems, we better be as a body of Christ lining it up with what the world says and living by what, what, what God says and living by what God says over our situation. Because if we can't do that, then, then, then we're in trouble, church. Do you believe that? And they're daily putting out stuff. The world's daily putting out things, um, uh, whether it's political or whatever. I get in trouble all the time. People are upset with me because it's like, Chris, you cannot be a political pastor. Get over yourself. Get over yourself. I am going to be because that's the reason why we're in this mess like we're in right now because the churches and pastors have been silent on issues, and I am not going to be. We are not going to be. We're going to be loud about it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about what the world says about it. We're going to move in God's ways about it. And I am tired of the church shrieking back when we should be stepping up and stepping in. I'm tired of us going, shh, man, be quiet. You're not supposed to do that. It's time for the church to get loud. Hey, murder is wrong when you're murdering innocent children. It's wrong. 
I don't care what, but it's, but it's a baby, in the, but what about, I'm telling you, what does the word of God say? Either we're going to live by his word or we're not. We're going to live by the word of God. If you come to this church, we are. I believe that God is bringing forth a call, a clarion call for the body of Christ to live by the word of God. And so that's why Peter says, know for certain that this God, this, that this Jesus that you crucified, he's made him both Lord and Christ. And as a result of that, everything has changed. Your prayer life needs to change. The way you read the word changes. Everything changed because of the result of him being Lord of your life. So therefore, when I get in the word, I'm not just reading scripture just because it's obligation. I'm reading scripture to engage the word because Jesus is the word. I want to find out what he says about my, what's going on in my life. That's what I'm doing. I'm opening the scriptures. I want to learn. I want to learn how to open the scriptures and find out. What it, when I first met Vanessa, I wanted to find out who, who she was. I asked her friends, hey, who is that? That girl over there. Oh, that's Vanessa? I go, I know that, but let's tell me a little bit about her. You know, like, well, she came from New Hampshire. New Hampshire? Really? Well, yeah, no, so I asked somebody else. Who, who, do you know anything? I'd ask because there were some guys that were hanging around her who I didn't like. Anyway, and so I, uh, I engaged them even. I was like, who, who is this? Who is this Vanessa? And they'd be like, well, you know, she loves to pray. And, and you know, and I'm just like, wow, she is, man, she is this, she is that. And I'm just finding out. So I already did my homework when I stepped to her. Hello. <laughs> I've already done my homework. And so I was just like, and I was just asking her when I sat her down, do you remember that Chili's? I sat you down, and we were there that for like our first date. She didn't know it was a date, but I sat her down, and I said, she didn't know it was. I paid, so I don't know how she didn't know that it was a date. Um, <laughs> but I sat her down, and I said, uh, what are you looking for? And Because uh, you know, I want to pray for you. What are you looking for in a man? What are you looking for? <laughs> She's like, well, I like a, I like a, a dark man. I was like, mm, covered. She goes, I like a man with big shoulders. I want to you know what I'm saying? She goes, I like, I like somebody who, who, who is engaged in the word. I'm like, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. I was trying to fit. I was trying to get. I was, man, I'm trying to get because I'm trying to find out who she is. Now, I love the fact that, that you're laughing, but here's what I want to say to you. If you love Jesus and you know you want to find out what he says about you and what is going on in your life, engage him through his word. Let him tell you about what he, I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord, that to give you a future and a hope not to harm you. And not only that, he says this, he goes, and my, I'll show you the path of life. In my presence there's fullness of joy, and at my right hand there's pleasures evermore, engaging and finding out in Scripture. And here's a result. I'm going to go back to the word to find out. This is what the result of that. After his, after his crescendo, this is what Peter says. And this is what happens at the response. This is what response is of the gospel. Verse 37. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. The Amplified Bible says they were pricked in their heart. That word pricked in the Hebrew has to do with the word pierced deeply is what the definition of it. And said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, repent. Change the way that you think and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises for you and your children and all who are far off everyone whom the Lord God calls to himself and with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them saying save yourselves from this crooked generation anybody think that we might be in a crooked generation and perverse generation right now anybody else think that there's stuff going on there right now you're just like oh my goodness can it get any worse then I go put gas in my car and so I'm I'm, I'm like trying to figure out save yourselves from this from this crooked and perverse generation so those who received his word were baptized and they were added to the, to the day that church 3,000 souls now here's my three points right here and the fellowship of believers Verse 42, and they, this is a result of what happened when the Holy Spirit came. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Point one, they devoted themselves to the teaching of the word. Number two, the fellowship to the breaking of bread. Number, that's number two. And then number three, prayers. So the word of God. The Word of God. The Bible talks about the Word of God. And what he, what he says, they, they, they devoted themselves to the, to the, the apostles' doctrine, the teaching of the Word of God. The Bible says that faith comes by, hearing. say it all out with me, hearing. hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Word of God. You want faith to, to, to rise up in your heart? Hear the Word of the Lord. 
Engage scripture. When I read the scripture, I'm telling you, I, I, I ask the Holy Spirit to show me what, the, what God wants me to, the, the teaching of the word. And I want you to look up here just for a second. I want everybody to look up here. I want you to hear this. There are a lot of teaching that is going on everywhere. You can click on a YouTube channel, a podcast, uh, uh, Instagram, all these different. There's so much teaching out there. If you're listening to teaching that doesn't line up with scripture and line up with the word of God, you are hurting yourself. There's all kind of stuff out there. There's all kind of teaching, postmodernism. I, I even, uh, Pastor Vernon sent me a clip where a man who has 1.2 million followers is saying that Jesus didn't, he, he didn't mean for us to give, that he was the only way, that he was just one way of many ways. And he sent this to all his followers or young people. I'm not kidding. That's a true story. He sent that to me. He's not the only way. He didn't mean for everybody to come through him. That's what the, the, the church would like for you to believe. That's what he said. Man, if I could reach through that iPad, I wonder, I just I'm like, we just lead people astray. He is the only way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. Nobody else goes. And he, Jesus is the only way. That's what I'm saying. You can't, you, oh, there's so many things that are going on. But find teaching that helps you to stay the course in what God is saying. Number one, they continued in the apostles' doctrine. Number two, they, they broke bread together in fellowship. How many of you ever been in a life group where the, the teaching of the word went about? Anybody ever been in a part? Been in a, raise your hand. Raise your hand if you've been in a life, been in a life group. Yeah, I, I have too, where the teaching of the word. And, and they broke bread together. Some of the best life groups that we ever had in this church was around food. <laughs> right? I would love, I would come and hear a, a teaching on Revelation or whatever it is on Revelation if you would teach, if you would teach me also how to cook brisket and, 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 and some mashed potatoes. And so, you know what I'm saying? Just, I mean, all of a sudden, I feel called to your life group. I feel the Spirit of the Lord drawing me to this place right here. I smell the Spirit of the Lord in this place. Some of you be like, I feel His presence. I go, hmm, I smell it. When do we eat? You know, I, I, I'm just telling you, breaking bread together, fellowship, koinonia is what the word is used when it talks about fellowshipping together. Because I have a perspective, Vanessa has a perspective, Pastor Kevin has a perspective, and different one have a perspective. And when I come together with saints and believers with, that are like-minded, that are trying to dive into the scriptures together, I can get a better and more full understanding of what God is saying. So if you're alone right now, you're not in a life group which we're starting, getting ready to start our life proofs back up. You, you're just like, man, I've gone to church. I've done that. I'm telling you, you need to be a part of a believing system, a body of believers that believe the same thing that can help pray for you and help you get engaged in what God is saying. Amen. And the last one is prayer. Here's what I'm going to say about that. The last one has to do with prayer. I don't open the scriptures without praying. There's no way that when I, when I get ready to engage the word of God, I pray. Here's what I pray. This is a prayer. I pray every time when I open the scriptures by myself. I say, Lord... Would you help me to see what you want me to see today? Holy Spirit, open my eyes, open my heart, open my ears, so that when I read your word, to, when I read this word today, that it's not just black ink on white paper, that it's not just something that I'm reading just to be leisure. I'm praying, Lord, that the words would dance off the page and right into my heart. I'm praying, Lord, that you would give me something, show me something, because you said in your word, call to me and I will answer and I'll show you great and mighty things that you know not of. So that's what I do. When I, I ask the Holy Spirit to open my eyes when I read the scriptures. Now, you can thank my wife for this. Vanessa said, honey, and she's learned. She says, I, I love, love listening to you preach, and you give us really good stuff. She goes, but it's really good if you give us some practical applications on how you engage the scriptures. So you can thank my wife for this. So this is what I came up with. Number one, that was the first one, pray. When you open the scriptures, pray. If you're taking notes, you can, you can write this down. Pray and ask the Holy Spirit to, to open your eyes so that you can see it. Number two, uh, I said also, get in a life group or a group that has to do with um, uh, the scriptures. Um, I asked a group of guys, and they're, they're going to start this up, I hit, to, op to start a Bible study. And they go, what do you want us to do? I said, I want you to teach a Bible study that has to do with taking the cellophane off the Bible all the way to re learning how to engage scripture. Because the Bible says that he meditates on, this, on the word day and night, shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruitness. Anybody want to be planted like that tree by the rivers of water? 
set your mind on things that are above. I'm telling you, the Bible, the Bible has to do with that. Number, number three, one of the things that I do, and uh, also you can do this as well, there are a ton of Bible apps. There's, there's anybody, anybody, raise your hand if you got a Bible app on your phone. Raise it high. All right, put it down. Raise your hand if you use those Bible apps on your phone. Okay, I do too. They got an app for the Bible and an app and a Bible for the app. They got apps for Bibles that have apps that need a Bible that have apps for the Bible. They got all kind of stuff. They got Mantis, the Blue Letter Bible. They got the Concordance. You can, you can open up uh, so many apps. There's so much help for uh, things to help you study the Bible and to really get into it. Use those Bible apps. I use them all the time to help me engage. look up the Hebrew word, look up the Greek word, look up the origin, look up the era in which the time of the, that the scripture was written, look up the places where Jesus, I mean, all of those different things help me to get a better understanding and picture of the Bible. And then ask questions. Become an investigator when it comes to the scripture. Ask good questions when you read the scriptures. That helps you to engage the scripture. Why did Peter say that? What was Peter thinking? Why did Jesus, why was Jesus, uh, uh, why, why did he go in the temple and do that? Ask questions. And then I ask questions of people like Pastor Terry and Dudley and different ones. Um, we, I ask Vanessa or I ask, I ask people questions like, have you ever thought about this? Because it helps me to engage in scripture and it helps the scripture to engage me. Amen. Another practical, practical thing that I do, and this is, this is important. You ready for this? This is my favorite one. It helps me every time. The best thing that I do when it comes to engaging scripture is I grab the Bible and I open it up. <laughs> and I read it. And not only do I read it, but I absorb it. Not only do I absorb it because the word is not an it, it's a person. His name is Jesus because his name is the word of God. So when you're engaged in scripture, Jesus said, all of the scriptures that you read, they're all about me. So when you, if it doesn't point to Jesus, then you're not really engaged in scripture. Amen? Open it up. Read it. See what God has to say about what's going on and how you are to live. Not by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen? Amen? I want to encourage you this week and for the rest of your lives to be a student and somebody that's hungry for the word. One of the other things I forgot to say in here is one of my points. Find, again, find like-minded believers that, that, um, that love to engage scripture, that are hungry for, for God. Anybody ever been in a group of people and all of a sudden, one person in a group of guys or a group of girls or whatever, or just a group, period, and somebody goes, I'm hungry. Then all of a sudden, you weren't hungry, but all of a sudden, you're hungry because they said they were hungry. And then all of a sudden, somebody else, I'm hungry. And all of a sudden, you find yourself in Wendy's, you know what I'm saying, or wherever it is. Because hunger breeds hunger. Get around some people who are hungry for the word. If you get around people that are hungry for the word, you ever, you ever seen somebody yawn and all of a sudden you find yourself yawning too? Scientists can't figure out what the, why they do that. It's like, it's contagious. Hunger for the word is contagious as well. Having a hunger for his word. Amen. The ushers are coming and they're gonna, we're going to do communion. Uh, so hold the elements. There's a reason why I wanted to, I'm talking about these, uh, these scriptures because I want to, it's a time for us to be in the word because of all the things that are going on in society. Would you agree? So many things. Thanks, Pastor Kevin. Appreciate it. So many things that are going on. Gentlemen, you guys can go ahead and pass, pass those out. So we need to be able to be people and students of the word and really believe that God is doing some amazing things. As they're passing that out, I don't necessarily want you to close your eyes, but I'm going to share something with you. I believe the Lord was speaking to me while I was, out, while I was preaching a while, a while ago. Um, I believe that the Lord spoke to me about a spirit of heaviness that's tried to come on some people, maybe you're watching online, maybe you, you not only are you watching online, but you also um, are here, and there's been a spirit of heaviness that's tried to attach itself to you. I believe the Lord wants to break that off this morning, or this afternoon, and I believe that he wants to do that. And not only that, I believe he wants to replace that with joy. 
because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen.